So AI in medicine, specifically this whole Chai One thing, everyone's saying it's going to revolutionize drug discovery, right? We're going to dive into that. Mm. How is this AI going to completely change drug development? which has always been such a slow and expensive process. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely ready for a change. It takes years, sometimes decades even, and billions of dollars to get one drug from an idea to patients. Okay, so what is Chai One? What is all the hype about? It's this AI. Yeah. And it predicts the 3D shapes of molecules, which is essential for drug discovery. Okay, why is that? I don't really get the connection there. So think about it like this. A molecule shape, like physically how it's laid out in space, that determines how it interacts with like our bodies. It's got to fit. Oh, okay. Like yeah. a key fitting into a lock or something. Exactly. Yeah. Only if that drug molecule is the right shape to interact with whatever it's targeting in the body, like a protein. Only then will it be able to treat whatever it is. So certain keys, certain doors. So how does this Chai One, how does it figure out the right uh, key to make? Well, it's multimodal, which is kind of cool. You can look at a bunch of different kinds of information at the same time, not just one thing. Okay, so instead of like just reading about a car. It can look at the blueprint, watch videos of cars driving around, maybe even get its hands on some spare parts. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Mm -hmm. To get a better understanding of the car as a whole. So what does that actually look like for Chai One? What kind of information is it looking at? So it can analyze a molecule's genetic code, mm -hmm. but it also looks at stuff from experiments. Like, how does this molecule actually behave in a Petri dish with other molecules? So it's not just theoretical, it's also practical. It gets the whole picture of this molecule. Precisely. And that means more accurate predictions. In fact, on something called the Pose Busters benchmark, this throws really complex molecules at different AIs. And Chai-1 had a 77% success rate. Whoa, 77%. That's got to have scientists freaking out. But what does that even mean? Like, what are these benchmarks actually telling us? Is that good? It is very good, like really good. For example, on the CASP15 protein monomer structure prediction set, which I know sounds super complicated. Oh, a little bit. Chai-1 achieved a common LDDT score of 0.849. Basically, it means it can predict these really complex protein structures really, really accurately. And that's essential if you want to design a drug that works. So I'm starting to see how this changes things. Instead of just kind of throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks, scientists now have Chai-1 as this high-tech map. Yeah, and it's guiding them to a more precise solution, hopefully much faster too, and cheaper. This makes me think about all those diseases that we haven't been able to tackle yet. Is Chai-1 already being used for things like that? It's still early days, but antibodies are a big one. That's an area where Chai-1 could really be a game changer. Antibodies, those are like uh, what our bodies make to fight off viruses and bacteria and stuff. Yeah, they're like the warriors of our immune system. And mm -hmm. each antibody targets a very specific enemy. They call it an antigen. It's like the lock and key thing again. Exactly. OK, so how does this relate to Chai-1? Well, imagine being able to design an antibody, the perfect key for any antigen, for any lock. That's what Chai-1 could do. So instead of like hoping our bodies develop the right antibody to fight something, we could just design one. That's the idea. I mean, right now, a lot of antibody research is about finding antibodies that already exist. You know, they find someone who has a natural immunity to something and they try to basically like replicate those antibodies in a lab. That sounds tricky. It is. It's a super long and difficult process. And with Chai-1, we could skip that. It could be a lot faster because Chai-1 can analyze the antigen and then it helps scientists figure out how to design an antibody that fits it perfectly. So we're talking custom designed antibodies yeah. for any disease. This is getting really interesting. Like what kind of diseases are we talking about here? Give me an example. Oh, the possibilities are huge. We could design antibodies that go after cancer cells mm -hmm. and they'd be super precise. So fewer side effects or antibodies that like neutralize the toxins bacteria make. Mm -hmm. That could make infections way less dangerous. We could even make totally new vaccines, ones that work against all kinds of viruses. This all sounds kind of sci-fi. It does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Chai-1 isn't locked away in some lab somewhere. It's free to use. Free? Wait, so anyone can just use it, log in and design an antibody? Well, you need to know what you're doing, obviously. But yeah, they have it on a website. It's super easy to use. Even companies can use it. Wow. They're really making this accessible. That's amazing. What do you think the impact of that will be? I think it's going to totally change who gets to innovate. Yeah. I mean, for a long time, drug discovery has been dominated by these huge companies, the ones with tons of money. Right, because it's so expensive. But now with Chai-1, anyone can potentially make a breakthrough, like small research labs, universities, 
even just individual scientists who have a good idea. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. We could see a ton of new discoveries if anyone can use this tech. Absolutely. And it really comes down to Chai Discovery's mission. They want to transform biology from science into engineering. We talked about that a little before, but I got to be honest, that whole engineering biology thing, it's still kind of blowing my mind. Like, are we talking about like redesigning life itself? It's a huge idea. Instead of just, you know, watching and studying how things work, we can actually start to control them super precisely, almost like writing code. Chai-1 is a perfect example, actually. It's not just showing us how these molecules are put together. It's actually giving us the tools to build totally new ones with very specific functions. So like, instead of reading about how a car works, we can build one from scratch. Exactly. But it does make you wonder, is there a downside here? Like, could there be unexpected consequences from all this? Yeah, it's like we've been handed this amazing gift, this powerful tool, but we have to make sure we're using it the right way. It's true for any new technology, right? We have to think carefully about how it's used. Chai-1 could be used for good or bad things. It depends on who has it. But for me, the potential benefits are just. They're too big to ignore, especially in medicine. That's what I'm taking away from all this. We're at this incredible time for science. Mm -hmm. And AI is leading the charge. This one tool, Chai-1, it could completely change so many things, not just medicine. It really is an amazing time to be alive, and that's what I want everyone listening to remember. You could be the one to take this tool and do something incredible with it. Make the next big discovery. So to wrap things up, imagine if designing these life-saving treatments was as easy as, like, ordering something online. What would that world look like? That's something to think about. It really is. That's all from us this time. Until next time, keep asking those big questions, and we'll keep diving deep into these fascinating topics.